FTP is a very popular protocol that allows user to upload and download file easily on a FTP server. You can configure FTP server in Windows Server 2012 R2 by installing FTP server rule. So in this demonstration, I will show you a very simple steps on how to install and configure FTP server rule in Windows Server 2012 R2. So first of all, uh, we are going to set up authentication for users in uh, our domain environment before installing the FTP rules. So this is the, our uh, member server which is part of the our domain mylab.local and as you are seeing the computer name is srtfnsoffice01 and this computer is a part of the our domain. So first of all, let's going back on uh, our domain controller. So this is uh, my domain controller and on that already I have created a one group that is FTP users group and for this demonstration purpose I create two users named user1 and user2 and both users are member of the FTP users groups so as you are seeing the members are user1 and user2. So now let's switch to our member server and uh, open Windows Explorer on a D drive I'm going to create a new folder let's specify the name FTP data right click on it uh, folder and select property click on security click on advanced security click on disable inheritance Select convert inherited permission into explicit permission on this object. And now I'm going to remove this uh, both user entry. Okay, so what we are going to do here is the simple. We are going to give the access permission to only FTP users group. And that's why I just uh, disable the inheritance and remove the both user entry because, because every user is a by default member of the domain users groups. And I don't want any other user can access the FTP data folder. So now let's add select principal. And this time I'm going to select FTP users. Click on check names. Okay. And now we are going to give the permission read and execute list folder content read and click on so advanced permission. Here I'm going to select create folders and append data. Now applies to so I just want to select these folder only. So FTP users have the permission only on this folder named FTP data and that is reverse folder, list folder, read attributes, read extended attributes and create folders and open data. Click on OK, click on apply, click on OK and click on OK. Now in the next step we are going to install the FTP role service on this server. So to do that click on manage, select add roles and features. Click on next, select role based or feature based installation and then click on next. We are going to install the FTP server role on this local server. That's why I'm going to select SRT hyphen SRV01. Click on next. Now here select web server IIS. Click on add features to include management tools. Click on next. Click on next. Here brief overview information about IIS. Click on next. And under role services. Here we have a FTP server and we select FTP server that's enable FTP service as well as FTP publishing on a web server. Click on next, click on install. So once installation complete, please restart the server, click on close to close this installation wizard, click on close and now I'm going to restart the server. Select restart and select the plan, click on continue. Once your server restart, log in as a, again to this computer as a domain administrator. On server manager, click on tools, select internet information service, IIS manager. On IIS console, expand your server name, click on no. Again, expand your server name, click on site, expand sites. And this will display all your sites located on the server. Right click on site, select add FTP site to create a new FTP site on this server. Now specify the name of your own FTP site. For this demonstration, I'm going to specify my lab FTP. Now specify the physical path, click on triple dot. Select the folder which we created earlier, that is FTP data. Okay, so this will be the physical path, D colon slash FTP data. Click on next. Now here's the binding IP address, that is all assigned, but you want to select the specific IP address, that is our IP address of our server. It's 192.168.49.5, the port number will be 21. Currently, we are not going to specify enable virtual host name. And for this demonstration, I don't want to use SSL, so select no SSL and then click on next. On authentication and authorization information, 
select basic authentication and allow access to select specified role or user group and over here you have to specify your group that is ftp users which we created on our domain controller that is ftp underscore users okay we want to send the permission read and write to the users now click on finish and this will create a one ftp site on your server as you are seeing ftp site created successfully and it is started now the next thing which we have to verify is that let's check the status of firewall firewall.cpl click on allow and app of features to windows firewall under this search for ftp server entries and the rule is currently allowed which are enabled for domain private and public profiles if you want to see the advanced settings click on inbound rules search for ftp rules which here ftp server ftp server passive and ftp server secure all rules are currently enabled through our firewall now let's switch to my client computer which is i'm using windows 7 box and this computer is also part of our domain not only really i log in on this computer as a user one click on windows explorer type the ftp url that is ftp colon the ip address of our ftp server which is 192.168.49.5 this will ask for the username and password, specify the user's credential, which in our case it is user1 and his password. Click on log on. And here. Now let's come back on our member server. On a T drive under FTP data, I'm going to create a new sample file. Okay, click on close and save this file. So just for testing purpose, I created one text file under our FTP data. Now let's come back on our Windows computer. Click on refresh, and here, as you are seeing, we have our text file which we created on our server. Now let's create our one folder. Okay, so user is uh, able to create a folder, and under that folder, can users create another folder? Yes. And uh, if you create a sample uh, text file. Okay, and if you use the user try to copy to our FTP server, let's paste over there. Now, user is able to store that text file on the FTP folder data. Lastly, switch back to the our FTP server where we want to verify that user's folder which we created on our client computer must be available over here. Now, let's switch back to our Windows 7 computer over here. I'm just going to close this Windows Explorer box and again let's open the Windows Explorer. Now type the ftp column double slash the ip address of our ftp server and this time I want to log in as a user 2 specify the password and here we can verify all these uh, created data on our ftp server is available over here as we are seeing we have a users1 data and the sample text file now if user try to delete the folder of users1 it won't it will give us the message with error that is access is denied but if user create his own folder we create a folder for user 2 and if user try to delete that folder that time user is able to delete his or her own folders which is created by the user and that time that is possible so this is the way how we can implement advanced permission on ftp server with the help of advanced ntfs permission so that's it for this demonstration. Thank you for watching this video demonstration.